Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today we are talking all about shoes. Shoes. What to do, what to get, what styles, what types, what heel heights, what do you do if you're an in-between size, what? Shoes. time welcome my name is Vera Justin and you might want to check out my other videos because we do talk about different uh, tips and tricks and tutorials and all sorts of things that are going to be useful to you if you are new to pole dance if you have or if you have no dance background at all so check those out and uh, let me know what you think we're gonna talk about four different things today sizes and what to do if you are in between two sizes heel height so how tall is your heel how tall should it be depending on your experience material so what are the shoes made of and what are my recommendations when it comes to the different material and style should you go for a boot should you go for a sandal another style so on and so forth if you want to skip to any parts of this video there will be a timestamp in the description below so please 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 use it if you don't want to hear this whole spiel but i do think that if you've never bought shoes before you want to watch this whole thing because you want to keep so many things in mind when you're buying and trying your first pair of shoes and for those of you that don't know me uh yet I would really like to just take a second to tell you something. I am never going to recommend a product that I genuinely don't use or have never tried or genuinely don't recommend. If I say it, I mean it. Everything you're gonna see here today, all the shoes that I have here, I have used and abused and tried them out and you can tell because of how beaten up they are. And uh, all these recommendations are sincere and they're from the bottom of my heart to you as a newbie in this field. I don't ever wanna misguide anybody. Everything I say on my channel is genuine. I will never be a sellout. So with that being said, uh, whatever I do recommend, I will try to put an affiliate link in the description box below. So for example, let's say you wanna buy these shoes, I will put a link in the description box below where you can find these shoes. And if you happen to buy something based on my recommendations and my tips, I will get a small percentage of that sale. And I think that's fair. I think I'm giving great information. It's authentic, it's sincere, and it's kind of a way for you to say, thank you, Vera, and here's a little something, something for you. If you want to know what my two favorite, favorite, favorite shoes are at this moment in my life, in my dancing, I would say these are my two favorite. Notice that they're both red. I'm feeling the red so much these days. Um, these are the 8-inch booties. These are a full suede finish. I love it. I don't care how dirty it gets. I love it. And these are the patent finish 8-inch sandals with the ankle support. Those are my those are my loves, you can my loves. If you are a newbie to pole dance and you are going to buy your first pair of shoes, I would say these are my top two options. If you wanna do a boot, I would do these in seven inches though, not eight, these are eight. Seven inches, open toe, patent finish. And if you wanted to do a sandal, I would do seven inches, patent finish, ankle support, sandal. If you want to know why, you have to watch the rest of this video. Foot sizes and half sizes and what to do if you are in between. First of all, I recommend that you find your local adult store and uh, go on in and well, make sure that they sell these shoes first, right? You don't want to go to an adult store just hoping that they have these shoes. Check, check out their website, check them out online, make sure that they sell dancer shoes. If they do, you want to go in person and try these on, especially if you're someone like me who's in between two sizes. If you're like, a, I'm a six and a half. If you're anything and a half, you're going to definitely want to try these out to see what you prefer. Maybe you're closer to a certain size over the other. I will give you my recommendations, but nothing beats you going in person and trying them on for yourself. If you don't have uh, somewhere that you can go and try these on, then just watch and maybe you can make the best decision possible with what I'm about to tell you. So I wear six and a half in women's shoe size. Things get a little weird when you are in between sizes, okay? When it comes to the sandal, I prefer to size down. So since I'm a six and a half, when it comes to sandals, I wear a size six. The reason is because if I wear a size seven, this happens where I have too much space in between my foot 
and the top of the shoe. And then my, my foot starts feeling all kinds of loose in there. There are things that you can do to overcome that, but I just rather not have to deal with all the alterations that I have to make just to be able to wear uh, a size seven sandal. So I do wear the size six, even if my toes stick out a little bit, I just point my toes extra hard and uh, I say goodbye to my pedicure. <laughs> And to be honest, even though I'm a six and a half and I'm wearing a size six in the sandal, um, I still I still don't go past the toes or past the heel, like it's just right. I'm a six and a half, I buy the six, and I'm just right. So it's not like it looks like the shoe's too small for me, it looks like it's just right. Now, let's talk about boots. I have found that when it comes to open toe boots, I like to size up. The reason I like to size up is because with the boots, my toes do tend to stick out a little bit more and I hate the feeling of my toes on the floor. I, I can't stand it. And it's like, yeah, well, just point, point your toes a little bit more. No, 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 I am totally pointing my toes and my toes are still grinding on the floor. I don't like that feeling. So personally, I have sized up in my boots and I love it. I, my, my toes don't scrape against the floor anymore and I just like the angle that my foot takes in the shoe. I do have high arches, which I will talk about in a little while. Um, when it comes to boots, that, that tends to play a role, it seems. I have high arches and my foot tends to slide down. Um, so maybe that's what pushes my, my toes forward. But overall, I'd like to size up in boots. That's a personal preference after having danced with size six boots for a while and not being very happy with how quickly my pedicures go to shh. So again, my recommendations are based on my foot. My foot and my ankles are small, skinny, with high, high little arches and very, very skinny ankles, okay? My feet are not wide at all. So keep this in mind. If you happen to have wide feet, you might want to take that into consideration. Let's just dive into it right now. What the hell? I have worn closed toe boots, okay, in size six. So I'm a six and a half, size down to size six and wore closed toe boots. After a while, my ankles started to hurt a little bit and also my toes very much because I felt that my toes were just being jammed into this front part of the boot when I would dance. Um, I, I attribute it to having high arches and so my foot tends to slide uh, down rather easily and then it just hits that front of the, I just don't like that jam feeling. That's why I told you in the beginning of the video, my favorite is now open toe because I don't experience that pain anymore. So that is one of the things I wanted to talk about sizing up with boots. Now, who knows, I have not tried, I have not tried closed toe boots in seven. So I have not tried closed toe boots sizing up. Uh, maybe it would make things worse, I don't know. I can't tell you, I don't know. If you are someone that has played around with this, that has tried different options, uh, sizing up, sizing down, let me know what your experience has been, especially if you are someone who is in between sizes. I'm curious to see what other people experience and let me know if your foot tends to be a little bit wider, a little bit narrower, let me know in the comment box. All right, so style. What style shoe should I get and what should I know about the different styles? Let's talk about these three styles right here. You have two options for boots. You could either do open toe or closed toe. I recommend open toe. I happen to like it more. I don't like how my toes feel jammed in the front. However, closed toe might give you a little bit more protection when it comes to your toes. If you're learning hard tricks and landing and stuff like that, which you're not. You, when you're beginning, you're not learning uh, kips and flips and all sorts of things. So I would get the open toe, see how they feel. They're flattering, they're gorgeous, and uh, you won't get that jammed foot feeling in the front that'll just turn you off to dancing in general. If you're gonna go for a sandal, I highly recommend that you get something that has straps around the ankle. This is amazing support, it's, it's, it's your best friend. I cannot imagine dancing in shoes without ankle straps. I, don't, I, I, I beats me. Ankle straps all the way, please. 
Keep in mind, the boots do tend to get a little bit hotter. So if you're living somewhere like uh, Miami, like me, uh, you might not like how hot it gets in those boots and you will sweat through your feet like never ever before. But I don't care about sweat. I like sometimes just the aesthetic of the boot. Some days I'm in the mood for the... So I'm just giving you options. I'm just giving you options. Just make sure if you go for a sandal, you get the straps and make sure if you go for the boot, you keep in mind those toes. You might not want a closed toe boot to start with. However, if you value your pedicures and your pedicures are like mine, they're not, I, I've never tried like gel pedicures or anything like that. I've always done like old school traditional pedicures. But if you paint your toenails and you know, you wear a closed toe boot, it's gonna protect your pedicure way more than any other shoe. So if you value just how your feet look on a regular basis, then yeah, get the closed toe boots. I'm just giving you different things to think about. Heel height. Definitely one of the more popular topics. How high should I go if I'm getting shoes, right? Mm -hmm. I want to show you what seven inches looks like versus what eight inches looks like versus what nine inches looks like. Mm -hmm. See, and I'll see them here in front of you. Yes. Let's not talk about nine inches right now. Nine inches is quite savagery. All right, this is a seven inch heel. Most heels we wear when we go out are like, what, like five inches, six inches when you go out and you party with your friends and you hang out. Um, I am going to probably be one of the few people that says that if I were you, I would start off, if you're inexperienced, I would start off with seven inch heels. Everywhere that I have looked, every, most people say, start them off with five inches, six inches, don't go higher than that. I want you to try seven inch heels because I'm gonna tell you what happened to me. I got my first pair of heels, they were seven inches. These were my very first pair of heels. Look at them. They were seven inches, they are seven inches. And when I wore them and I started practicing in them, within two weeks, Two weeks, I was like, no, 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 I want a bigger heel. I want a bigger heel. I want my legs to look longer. I want. I would go to class and I would practice and then I would see other girls wearing the, uh, the eight inch, right? And I would think, man, my heels don't look like heels next to those. Like those are heels, those look amazing. So you're gonna wanna go higher, I think. This is something that happens to you quickly. Hey, are you getting value out of this video so far? Give me a subscribe and a like. Let me know what you think in the comment box. Okay, back to the video. Um, most girls don't want to just stay at seven inches. Most girls want to jump to the eight inches because there is such a nice difference in the look of the shoe and everything, and just the legs, and you really pop when you start at, when you when you start wearing those eight inches. But I don't want you to jump straight to eight inches if you have no uh, experience dancing with heels. I think you should start at seven. And I want to tell you the truth. I still use my seven inch sandals i still use them for floor work i love how they look and feel when i'm doing a piece or when i'm working when i'm working on a piece that is uh very floor work heavy i tend to love how the seven inches look as a matter of fact sometimes i'm doing the floor work floor work heavy sessions in my eight inch ones and i find that a lot of the floor turns and a lot of the things become a lot harder so I end up going back to my seven inch ones um, and they look really, really pretty. They're still, they're still quite a, a nice heel. Okay, seven inch is still quite a nice heel, but for someone like me that has very long shins, I think I have longer shins than most people. So from my ankle to my knee is quite long compared to the average girl I have found. Um, that heel height makes a big difference when I'm doing a lot of floor work. So what I'm trying to say is basically, I still use my seven inches like, all the time, these are amazing. So if you end up buying a pair of seven inch heels and two weeks later, you're like, hell no, I wanna go up to eight. Keep your seven inches because time will come, the time will come when you will want to have your seven inches to, to do other things. So seven and eight inches are my two favorite. Don't go smaller, you're gonna regret it. You're gonna so regret it. And these are things that you can get used to, okay? As you start practicing with the shoes, you will get better. So don't go smaller than seven inches. You heard it here. If you're gonna do a boot, I also recommend that you start at seven inches. But 
guess what? If you're gonna do a boot and you're a beginner, you can still start at eight inches. I'm gonna tell you why. The boots tend to feel more secure. Okay, when you have this uh, ankle support zipped up to the side and tied with shoestrings all around, you feel nice. It's like this false sense of security, which can be a bad thing for other things. But what I'm trying to say is you'll feel more secure. You can go eight inches here, even if you're, you're starting out. I can't believe I'm saying this. Yes, if you're gonna do a boot like this, you can do eight inches, even if you're a beginner. You're, gonna, you're not gonna be so scared because you're gonna have this uh, ankle support. You still might fall on your butt, but that's gonna happen no matter what shoe you wear, I promise. If you are an intermediate dancer or an intermediate pole dancer, what are you waiting for? Jump to eight inches. Like, hello, welcome to, welcome to eight inches. Let's go eight inches. Dance in eight inches. It will change your life, I promise. You can always size down to seven inches. If you don't like the way that the eight inches look, if you feel that, oh my God, this is too much, this is too long, this is crazy, this is too high, uh, you can always go back to seven inches. Most girls don't feel that way. There is one girl that I know that did say that once and I, I remember thinking to myself, not me. She was like, oh no, you know, my legs are too short and I don't like wearing the long heels. It makes my legs look out of proportion. In my mind, I was thinking, hell no, the bigger the heel, the better. Like, I like big heels. I, just, I like big heels. But experiment. You can always go back down to seven, like I do for certain types of dance. Okay, now we can talk about the nine inches. The nine inch heel is a massive uh, thing. Let me tell you, it's quite heavy. It is quite heavy. I don't think most people enjoy dancing in nine inch heels. There are some few badasses out there that I have seen rocking the nines, especially in boots, like, and killing it. But I think the average person will not like uh, the feel of the nines for dancing. They are heavy and they are bulky and it's, it, it can be quite a drag. Um, but hey, there are no rules here. If you like dancing in the nines, go for it. It's just gonna be, it's, it requires a little bit more experience, a little bit more strength throughout the legs and the hip flexors to be able to lift the legs when you're, when you have a shoe that is so heavy. So just keep that in mind, okay? You don't wanna bring about an injury because you are wearing, these are basically like ankle weights, okay? So keep that in mind. I do like these for photo shoots though. So if you know that you're gonna do like a little Valentine's Day photo shoot, Christmas photo shoot, blah, 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 photo shoot, where are the nines? The nines are gorgeous and they, and they really make the legs look so long and it's like they're a piece of their own. Like the whole photo ends up becoming just about the shoot. It's such a beautiful thing. I love the nines for photo shoots. Really pretty, but don't dance in them unless you're experienced. All right, let's talk about material. So you have different finishes. This here is a patent finish, okay? It's got a glossy finish, it's very shiny. I used to not like patent finish. I used to look at it and say, oh, that looks so fetishy and it's too much. And I love them now. I love the shiny, I, I guess my opinion changed over time. Um, I love the shiny finish to these shoes. They stand out, they look so pretty, they pop. Um, I love them and they tend to be a little bit more durable. So anything patent is gonna be more durable. Let's compare this patent finish to a matte finish. This is also known as full leather. So fake leather finish. Um, let me tell you, full leather is gonna stretch so much. So these were my first shoes ever and um, they have stretched so much with this uh, leather material. Like it's not even funny how much these stretch. Uh, so you might not like that if you're a new dancer. You might you might wanna get more bang for your buck, a shoe that's gonna be a little bit more durable if you go for the patent. Now, what happens with patent is that it's sticky. And sticky can be good, but sticky can be bad. Let me tell you why sticky is good. If you're new to dancing, you will benefit from a sticky patent shoe if you're using it in your climbing classes, your tricks classes, the patent finish will adhere to the pole and create friction and will allow you to stay in those positions for a longer period of time and will even help you stay in those positions. Anything like a matte finish or a full suede finish, 
you will be sliding down that thing. Um, you will basically have to you have to be strong with throughout your throughout your ankles, throughout your knees, uh, throughout your hands. You're gonna have to hold yourself in those positions because these shoes will not help you. They will actually slide. So keep that in mind if you're new. That's why I recommend patent for newbies because patent will help you stay on that pole, especially if you're new. Okay. Now let's talk about why sticky is not good. It depends on the floor of the studio that you're or in your, if you're home, it depends on the floor that you're dancing on. I've been to studios where it's not a problem at all. The floor and the patent, they live, they coexist happily, nothing happens. But there have been floors that I have danced on and they tend to be those um, like LA fitness floors, like they have that shiny finish that are like those floors and patent. It's like uh, basketball shoes, squeaky sounds and, and things like that. It's like it gets stuck as you're doing your floor work on the floor. So keep that in mind with Patton. Keep in mind the floor of your studio and or the floor of your home where you're practicing. And if you think that patent is going to create friction and get stuck, then it might be an unpleasant experience for you. There are ways to dance around that, but you have to have you have to be a little bit more experienced. And I know that if you're a beginner, you might struggle with patent on the floor. So if you know that your studio has a floor that is not compatible with patent, then you might want to go the mat route or you might want to go the full suede route for a smoother floor work experience. Patent tends to be quite easy to clean as opposed to the full leather. These are two full leather examples. Patent tends to be much easier to clean. You will never be able to get rid of these like white stains that come with uh, use and abuse because this is like the chipping and the revealing of the material underneath. But any sort of like little black marks like those, they will come off with patent with a little bit of um, mild soap and water and a little washcloth and some rubbing, you know, like here, these, this will all come off. What won't come off is this stuff right here in the tips and the wearing away of the edges and anywhere where you have lace or string if that wears away, that's different. But the patent itself, like this whole stuff right here, all these little black marks, they will come off if I rub them. The faux leather is literally the worst when it comes to staining. Immediately, this material just gets... But I don't care. I love it. I don't mind my shoes looking like that. It's okay. I've made peace with it. There are things that you can do to protect your shoes, like uh, shoe protectors. You can even make shoe protectors out of socks, old socks that you don't wear anymore. Let me know if you want to know how to do that. Uh, let me know in the comment box below and I'll make a video for you and I'll show you how you can get more wear out of your shoes, but I don't. I let them go to shit. I really do because it's okay. It's okay with me. It's okay. It looks like you use them and that's fine with me. But I get it, these uh, shoes are not in any way, shape, or form, they're not cheap, okay? Any pair of shoes is gonna cost $50 and up. If you go for the boots, some of these boots are over 100 bucks. So if you wanna protect them, I totally understand why. So in case I'm horrible and I'm all over the place, here's a quick chart that you can pause on that quickly tells you some of the pros and cons of the different materials. I'm done. So what shoes are you gonna get? I wanna know. In the comment box below, let me know what size, style, color, and uh, material your shoe is. I'm seriously curious. I, I wonder. I wanna know what some of you are starting off with, and then I wanna hear from you. I wanna hear if this was actually helpful. If, if I gave you any value today, give me a thumbs up, give me a subscribe, give me a freaking comment. Let me know what helped you. Let me know if you still have any questions so that I can answer your questions. I am here for you and use me as a resource. I wish I had someone like me telling me about these things when I first started out.